So we're going to look at the last two sections we're going to do on loops, and that is on these uh, more, a couple more while loop examples, and then look quickly at nested loops. Um, so there's a couple more examples on using while loops here uh, that you can go over. One is this one ca calculating the greatest common divider uh, between two integers and how that works uh, with whiles and if. Um, you might want to review how a greatest common <laughs> divisor looks uh, when you're doing this. Um, but it's a good example, just answer these questions. And there's another uh, program here, a conversation one. There's these uh, different programs out here have, have a long history. Um, on the internet, sometimes they're called chatbots. Sometimes they're used to solve uh, or answer what's called the Turing test. But uh, it is a program that you can talk to and should talk back to you. This is a very primitive but kind of cool example. Uh, so it has a while loop here um, until the user enters you by. And then de depending on what you say, the computer says something back to you based on a random number. Uh, generally based on what you say. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. Um, just real primitive stuff, but it gives you a, a good example of using a while loop for that. Um, so you just go through those two examples. Um, there's a nice challenge activity on bidding uh, here that you can try out. Um, and another one on insect growth and see if you can do those. But those are challenge activities and they're not required, but they're not bad examples. The last thing we're going to look at is nested loops, and these are loops within loops. Um, the book goes over a couple examples of a while loop within a while loop, and here they're printing out all the uh, combinations of letters, uh, A, 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 B, A, C, all the way, and then going to B and B, A. So one loop prints out the first letter, and the second loop prints out the second letter. Um, so you can go through looking at that, uh, all different combinations of domains. And here's another one for printing out a histogram uh, where we print out a set of stars all in a row, uh, different lengths of stars uh, for a histogram, and then working with two loops, two for loops for that, or, or two while loops. Um, and uh, talks about rows and columns. So these are good examples. Um, we do use uh, multiple nested loops quite frequently. Uh, and it's good to get a little experience with them. Uh, I'm going to show you yet another example. So you can go through these. Uh, but um, I'm teaching this in the fall. We're getting near Christmas. So we're going to try to print out uh, different loops uh, and just as real simple Christmas tree. So I'm going to create that for you here. So I've created a, a new pro, uh, new uh, class here called Tree Printer, and um, I've deleted most of the code in the default template that started. I've kept the constructor, and so in the constructor I've just put some code to print out some stars. Um, so we're going to uh, print out a bunch of stars in a row, um, and so we're just going to do this in loops so we have better control over it. So we're going to say uh, star equals 1, while star is less than 10, star plus plus to add 1 to star each time. And each time we're just going to print out an asterisk, a star, uh, here. And then after, and then we'll loop back up. So this should print out uh, 9 stars, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, because we're starting at 1 and going to 9 uh, here. Um, maybe I can make this less than or equal to 10, then it'll print out 10 stars. Okay, and then we do a print line at the end. So if I just create a tree here, it'll actually run the constructor and print out what we want. So I just put the code in the constructor this time as an example. So it'll print out 10 stars when this is 10. If I were to change this to 5, it'll print out 5 stars. print out five stars then. Okay, so we have this one loop that does this, and we're going to stick this inside of another for loop. So I'm going to say for, and I'm going to print out multiple lines. So I'm going to call, use the counter variable here, line equals one line less than some value. Let's say we print out seven lines, and line plus plus to add one to lines each time. I'm going to put this inside there. Let's clean this up a little bit. 
So again, I have a for loop inside another for loop here. So I'm going to, so seven times I'm going to do this for loop and print out five stars. So seven times I'm going to do that. So now if I compile this and run, oops, I forgot to declare the lines, int line, uh, count number of lines. Okay. Let's see if that'll work. So now it prints out uh, each, the inner loop prints out five stars, and then I call, go through that loop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, seven lines. So this inner loop prints out uh, five stars. So what happens is that uh, we start this loop and set line equal to one. And then we go in here and we set start this loop and set star equal to one. And then we print out a star and check if star less than five, add one to it, um, print out another star, print out another star. So we do this loop five times. And then we print out this print line. And then we're here. And so this is the end of this loop. So line was one, we add one to it, make it two, and check is it less than seven? Yep. So we loop back up and do this, and then we get into this loop and we reset star to one. And then we do this loop five times. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if you have old cars that have an odometer, but as you go over miles, one mile, two miles, three miles, four miles, five miles, six miles, seven miles, nine miles, ten, it'll switch the little odometer reading for the one for the single digit will switch from nine back to zero, and then uh, it'll also kick the the next digit up, the tens digit up. So it's kind of like these old odometers where, or like gears, or one gear is inside, and when it turns around, it turns another gear. So I don't know what kind of way you want to visualize it, but this loop, uh, each time this we go through this loop, we go through this five times, and then we do this once more, and then we do this five. So it's got a loop inside a loop. And so that's what let, lets us print out uh, we print out one star, we print out five stars, and then print line, and then go through, print out. So each line is this loop, and each star in that. Now one thing nice that we can do is, let's say, so, so we can see what the line variable is. Let's change this, so rather than always printing out five stars, let's print out line stars. So when line is one, the first time we loop, we're gonna, the inside loop is going to print out one star. But the next time, uh, through the outer loop, line will be two, and then the inside loop will print out two stars. Like okay, so see if you walk out, what do you think this is gonna print out? Let's compile this and see. So it prints out one line, then two lines, I mean stars, then three stars, four stars, five stars, six stars. It prints out different number of stars each time as the line gets bigger. So you can actually play with this, see if you can understand uh, this loop and see if you can make it uh, make sense. Uh, and then we can try to do some things uh, to try to print out um, a tree. See if you can print out a tree somehow. Uh, so you can try some different things. Maybe, um, let's say rather than doing one star and then two stars, let's try to do uh, one star and two stars. Or let's say rather than printing out some, um, let's, let's run this again. So this looks like half of a tree. It'd be nice if we could print out like this or, or else print out some spaces here. So print out some different spaces. So see if you can maybe see if you want you to play with this and try to print out, uh, add some uh, loop for printing out some spaces or something like that to get a star. I'll show you a solution in just a sec. Now I've changed my loop a little bit uh, here to get a step. I want to print out one star, then three stars, then five stars, on uh, seven stars. And then I just have to space my stars over. I think it'll look more like a, a pine tree. <clears throat> so here's how I'm doing that. Um, I'm now incrementing the n line number, or the line I'm at, by two each time. So I'm starting at one, and then I add two to it, it'll be three. And now two more to it will be five. So I'm jumping that up by twos each time. Um, I'll just add this variable for the max lines so I could easily change and make a 
uh, more lines or less lines in my overall output. But now I'm going to add another loop here for the spacing. Let's try that. So I made some changes. Again, I added a for loop here to print out some spaces. So I want to print out a set of spaces in a loop and then a set of stars in a loop. Um, so I've changed this around a little bit. Um, before I was trying to, uh, I wanted the number of stars to be a go from one to three, and I had changed this line. I moved this back to line to uh, increment by one. Uh, and then this prints out the right number of spaces. And then here for stars, I want to print out one star, and then I want to print out uh, three stars. So I change this so it loops uh, and it goes to the line times two. So when the line is one, it'll print out one star. When the line is two, it'll print out, uh, well, it'll print out three stars. So I'm using a less than sign here. So it takes a little bit of tweaking to get this to work correctly, but now that I have this working, it should print out this sort of a tree, a pine tree uh, example. So, and this is very powerful when you're using loops within loops. Uh, we often use them um, for when we're working with grids or space X and Y coordinates. Um, we also use them frequently when we're doing data, like in a spreadsheet or things like that when we're manipulating data. Uh, we'll see more on that when we get into arrays uh, in future chapters. But hopefully you enjoyed this simple example.